Welcome to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and put likes, because your support is important for us. And here we go. In a significant development, France and the United Kingdom have authorized Ukraine to strike Russian military installations within Russia using long-range scalp-slash-storm shadow cruise missiles. This decision allows Ukraine to target key airfields in border regions such as Kursk and Belgorod, which are critical to Russia's military operations against Ukraine. However, there are several limitations and conditions that temper the full utilization of these capabilities. The Scalp-slash-Storm Shadow missiles, supplied by the UK and France, boast a range of up to 250 kilometers, according to a report by BBC News citing an anonymous French military aviation officer. This range theoretically puts several important Russian military targets within Ukraine's reach. French President Emmanuel Macron emphasized the necessity of allowing Ukraine to neutralize military installations from which attacks on Ukraine are launched. Despite this authorization, there are practical limitations. Ukrainian Su-24 aircraft, which are currently equipped with these missiles, need to approach the Russian border to launch them. This proximity exposes them to the formidable Russian air defense systems, significantly increasing the risk to Ukrainian pilots and aircraft. The situation might improve with the anticipated delivery of F-16 fighter jets by the end of the year. These aircraft are better suited for such missions, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has indicated uncertainty about whether Ukraine's international partners will allow the F-16s to be used for strikes within Russia. This strategic ambiguity leaves a gap in Ukraine's current operational capabilities. In a related move, the Biden administration in the United States has relaxed its previous stance against Ukraine using American weapons on Russian soil. According to The Guardian, the U.S. now permits Ukraine to use American weapons in strikes specifically targeting areas bordering the Kharkiv region. This policy shift, confirmed by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, marks a significant change in American policy and is intended to enhance Ukraine's defensive and offensive operations against Russian military concentrations near the border. Sergei Nikiforov, the press secretary to the Ukrainian president, highlighted that this decision by the Biden administration is poised to significantly bolster Ukraine's capacity to resist Russian forces. The authorization from the US complements the support from the UK and France, providing Ukraine with a broader range of military options. While these developments mark a strategic enhancement for Ukraine, the full impact depends on overcoming logistical challenges and securing further commitments from international allies. The coming months will be crucial as Ukraine navigates these complexities to maximize its defensive and offensive operations against Russian military targets. That's all for now, see you later.